love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka Show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union. Hello comrades and welcome back to the Shanka show. Today we're gonna continue our topic about Soviet humor and Soviet political anecdotes. We already talked about uh, Lenin and Stalin and Khrushchev and today it's uh, Leonid Brezhnev's turn. Uh, when he became a general secretary of Communist Party of Soviet Union, which automatically you are the leader of the country, since we had only one party. Um, it was in 1964, he was only 57 years old. I don't think there were many jokes about him because he was young, he was healthy, he was very attractive. But later on, in the late 70s, early 80s, um, it's, you know, he was at power almost 20 years. He got old, uh, he started having health issues. So of course, based on his uh, uh, looks and his acts, we started having a lot of anecdotes about Comrade Brezhnev. Well, if you study a little bit Soviet history, you might uh, remember that Brezhnev, for whatever reason, was a big fan of uh, kissing other leaders on the mouth. There's a famous uh, photo of uh, Honecker, the leader of German Democratic Republic. And so, yeah, you could tell that uh, he was really into kissing other guys. And you know, I remember we didn't think about it like it was gay. For me, it was just like, man, this is really weird uh, to go for a real <laughs> deep kiss with another dude. So of course, it created a lot of anecdotes about it. So hey, comrades, I actually have an anecdote on this topic. <laughs> remember, as I told you, it was one of the things that uh, if you can come up with an anecdote on the current topic, you're a very cool guy. So I'm trying to be a cool guy. So there's an anecdote about Brezhnev. Uh, during some uh, summit with world leaders, uh, he was kissing with some uh, guy, another president of some African country. And after he was done, uh, one of his um, helpers, you know, whatever, secretaries, like Comrade Brezhnev, you know, that guy uh, that you just been kissing, he actually aligned with United States of America, and he's not in our socialist camp. So, uh, I'm not sure what you're trying to do. And Brezhnev replied, Damn it, I know, but he's such a great kisser, I just can't help it. So, this is an anecdote about Brezhnev, how he liked kissing. I just found out, I didn't know about it, but apparently Leonid Brezhnev even got himself in a uh, Guinness Book of Records, because he had the most amount of awards ever uh, awarded, given to any single person. He had a total of 114 different awards. He had five stars of the hero of the Soviet Union. Four was actually hero of the Soviet Union, so that's like a military award. And number five was the hero of the Soviet labor. So he uh, had more stars than next guy down, which was um, General Georgi Zhukov or Marshal Zhukov. And he also became marshal, and that was a famous thing. Like people knew that Brezhnev goes somewhere to visit some country, Africa or Asia. It's a good idea to give him an award because it was like his hobby uh, to collect these awards. So of course, guess what? We have an anecdote on this topic, and it goes like this: the very first surgery on the chest done to the human was actually not on some uh, lady that wanted to have her breasts bigger. The very first surgery on the chest was done to Leonid Brezhnev. They made his chest wider because he didn't have enough room to put all his awards. So he actually laid under a knife and they made his chest wider so he can fit all his medals. So this is an anecdote about Leonid Brezhnev and his love for the awards. And you know the whole events with Brezhnev because he pretty much was uh, my uh, leader since I was born in 1971 till 1982 when he passed away. Um, and I saw him on TV many times and in like early 80s, 1980, 81, 82, he looked really horrible. And especially, you know, during the, these large gatherings of Communist Party, uh, so-called Siesdy, 
there's a job of the general secretary is to have a long, like hour long speech to tell about the latest achievements. And it was really pathetic to watch this poor old guy. Uh, he was really struggling uh, to just say things. So everybody was just patiently sitting and waiting until he mumbles through his speech. And uh, there's a, quite a few videos about it, uh, like this one right here. So of course he had uh, you know some problems with reading this long long report so of course there's a lot of uh, different anecdotes about it unfortunately most of them is this wordplay so you can't really translate it to English uh, but I have a one on this topic which I think is pretty good so if you remember in 1980 uh, Soviet Union had Olympics which were boycotted by United States and some other countries uh, so uh, during the uh, time when the World Olympics going on Brezhnev had another long speech so he is reading speech you know he's really slow and uh, kind of just kind of struggles through the pages and then suddenly he flips the page and he looks at the paper and then he says oh 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 and then you know his people like looking behind his back like what's going on so another guy peeked behind his shoulder and he's like Comrade Brezhnev, those are not O's, those are Olympic rings, you know, there are five of them, so you don't need to spell them, it's just the Olympic rings, keep on going, keep on reading your report. So there's another anecdote about Comrade Brezhnev. All right, moving on, and our next uh, leader was Yuri Andropov, and I just want to remind you, if you guys new to my channel, I already have videos uh, made about Khrushchev, uh, Brezhnev, Andropov, Chernyenko, and Gorbachev. I'm planning to make a little bit later videos about Stalin and Lenin, but otherwise, if you're curious, uh, there's already videos in my channel about the leaders. Uh, so just kind of scroll down and you'll find there's a quite a few videos which I already made about leaders. But now we're going to talk about Yuri Andropov, who became a general secretary of the Soviet Union after uh, Brezhnev passed away in November in, of 1982, I believe that was the date. And he was previously the leader of KGB. So there was a quite a few changes after Andropov became the leader. Like he was really trying to turn the country around, like pretty much bringing back to like Stalin era you know when the people are afraid of the government and he kind of tried to you know tie it up everything because people were just kind of lazy there was a lot of drinking going on uh, people playing hooky uh, not showing for work uh, so he became super strict and of course there's a lot of anecdotes uh, came up after he became our leader and of course we didn't know uh, how the whole voting was going on because in Soviet Union, you don't elect your leader like they elect in the United States, for example. There's just a group of people gathered together, a committee, a central, central committee, and they just vote for, you know, who knows what is based on. Um, so people voted uh, to elect Andropov as the next leader. So there is anecdote. Then after voting um, was finished, Andropov announced like, okay, comrades, all of you who voted for me, you can uh, lower your arms and step away from the wall. So that's a joke about how was vote going. So it sounded like they all were lined up along the wall and they both raised their hands up. And so this is how they voted for Andropov to become a new leader. Also, every new year, there was kind of tradition. I believe we have that in the United States too, that the uh, leader of the country will have a televised uh, kind of congratulating people with the new year 
so there's a really short uh, joke about when Andropov was doing this speech. Uh, he, you know, usually say Happy New 1980 or whatever year, and Andropov kind of slipped and says uh, Happy 1937, and this what means that he's trying to roll back like rules and strict. Uh, things going on like we had in 1937 there were mass purges going on all over the country I think 1937 that's where a lot of people in the army were arrested and killed and also in the party so that the joke that Andropov slipped during his the new year greetings and he said happy 1937 all right uh, next leader so if you remember we had pretty much like th three uh, leaders of Soviet Union died in less than three years or four years so uh, Andropa was a little bit over a year and he uh, passed away then the next one became Charnienka who was already very old and uh, not healthy so of course right away we had a lot of anecdotes uh, because of that and there's a lot of other anecdotes where because his father was Chukcha um, Eskimo so and I told you already that uh, our Polish jokes in Soviet Union were actually Chukcha jokes. So there's a lot of humor was just because his father was Chukcha, um, but actually I didn't find him that funny. Um, uh, but uh, let's go and uh, try to crack a couple of uh, anecdotes, jokes about uh, Chernyanko. So the question is, what is the difference between Andropov and Chernyanko? The difference is in body temperature. So that means that he's already acting almost dead, barely walking. And there is a videos of him doing his speeches and it was kind of horrifying because it's like, oh my goodness, this is Brezhnev 2.0. He's already uh, can uh, barely talk. So that was the case. There's another joke about Chernyanka. Uh, so when Andropov died, so there's a phone call uh, to Kremlin and uh, you know they answer the phone and somebody's on the phone says are you guys looking for a new general secretary and people are like what are you sick on something you know they're surprised that somebody will call with that question and the guy answers yes i'm sick and very very old so that's chernyanka calling for the job opening um another anecdote about chernyanka is uh, about his daily routine they said, I uh, just want to tell our citizens to so Comrade Chernyanka is actually in good health and he does everything according to his doctor's recommendations and he has a pretty strict uh, schedule. So at 8 a.m. Uh, Comrade Chernyanka goes at number one. At 9 a.m. Comrade Chernyanka goes number two. And around 10 a.m. Uh, he wakes up and goes out of bed. And of course, I think everyone knows that number one, you you pee number two you you poop so that's a joke about other situation with health conditions of comrade chernyanka and as you know chernyanka that was less than a year and chernyanka passed away so the last final uh, anecdote about chernyanka and we have a lot of these uh, anecdotes about you go to the uh Sviat, so you go to the other world that means that when you died you go we don't say like you go to heaven, you go to the other world, and Tot Sviat. So Chernyanka meets uh, Brezhnev after his death, and Brezhnev's like, hey, so who's running the country right now? And Chernyanka answers, Misha Gorbachev. Brezhnev answers, really? Anyone supports him? And Chernyanka, no, he actually can walk on his own, so no one supports him right now. So that's another um, anecdote about and final anecdote about Chernyanka and now we're gonna crack a couple of jokes uh, about our last leader of the Soviet Union the very first and the very last president of Soviet Union is before we had a general secretary and Gorbachev actually changed the name and he officially became the president of the Soviet Union but of course we all knew that he was, uh, you know, number one guy being a secretary of the Communist Party. Uh, so a couple events to just to help you to understand this uh, anecdotes that come in. Uh, 
the huge difference was that first of all uh, Gorbachev was the very first leader who was uh, having his wife by his side like prior to that we never ever saw our leaders wives like never Brezhnev, Andropov, Chernyenkos, uh, Khrushchev they never were like walking with him taking pictures with him it was you know it's the man's world Gorbachev was the very first Soviet leader that had Raisa by his side and of course that just by itself created tons of anecdotes another uh, thing that uh, Gorbachev started fighting uh, alcoholism really hardcore like they raised prices for alcohol they cut production uh, of vodka they cut production of wine they cut bunch of uh, vineyards uh, so there became a huge shortage of uh, alcohol so there was a long lines for people to buy vodka and it became way more expensive so of course there was a bunch of anecdotes on that topic and they also they uh, changed the law so you can only buy vodka after 2 p.m before i think it was maybe 11 or something in the morning and they rolled it so you can uh, go to the store and purchase purchase alcohol you can only buy it after 2 p.m so that's the kind of general topics what Gorbachev did and of course a lot of jokes uh, were about his spot on his forehead on his head but it's mostly about you know bird took a dump on his head okay this first anecdote I apologize in advance it's kind of it's wrong uh, but it's uh, it's not that like funny but it's kind of funny so Gorbachev uh, calls uh, Ronald Reagan and he's just like hey I just want to tell you uh, my, my condolences about the, your uh, Challenger spaceship I'm very sorry about it and Reagan are like what are you talking about uh, the takeoff uh, is planned in 15 minutes so Gorbachev is like oh crap I'll call you back in 30 minutes so that's the uh, anecdote about uh, Gorbachev calling a little bit too early to express his condolences about explosion of Challenger. Uh, so there's one uh, anecdote about Raisa Gorbachev, his wife. So when they uh, went to visit the uh, United States, Ronald Reagan wanted to, to you know, express his appreciation for uh, Soviet Union, you know, uh, allowing the Berlin Wall to come down. So uh, Reagan talks to Raisa Gorbachev and is like, yeah, I would like to um, give you as a present this nice Cadillac limo. And she's like, you know, I don't think it's going to look very nice if Soviet people find out they just got the limo as a present. And Reagan like, well, I guess you're right. Well, what about if we just kind of sell you, you know, symbolically for one dollar? She's like, okay, that sounds good. So she pulls out of uh, her wallet five bucks. Um, and Reagan looking at his pockets he's like you know I don't have change right now she's like oh don't worry just give me another four limos uh, for change it's no problem so there's you know, another anecdote about uh, problems with uh, buying alcohol so this worker goes to buy a bottle of vodka and he sees this you know long line and he's like what's going on they're like well you know thanks to Gorbachev we have shortage of vodka so now you gotta wait in line for an hour to buy vodka so we got this worker gets all angry he's like you know what i'm just gonna go to kremlin and i'm gonna kill gorbachev so he turns around uh, runs away then he comes back all sad and gets quietly in the line and people are like so what happened did you kill gorbachev he's like oh my goodness a line into kremlin to kill gorbachev is way longer this line to buy vodka and the last anecdote about um uh, Mikhail Gorbachev is just kind of it's a joke about what happened in country uh, so you know the as I said prices for vodka skyrocketed so a guy sits at home watching TV and his kid comes to him daddy I heard that vodka got way more expensive does that mean you're gonna drink less so uh, his dad smiles at him you know uh, fluffs his hair he said no keto it doesn't mean that your daddy gonna drink less it means you you gonna eat less so this is how uh, humor goes about uh, people and how much they like to drink
All right, so this concludes my second video about uh, Soviet humor and Soviet anecdotes about our leaders. We're done with the topic of Soviet leaders. Uh, we're not going to move forward because bef this is the end of the Soviet Union. And on our next video, we're going to start covering other very popular topics for the Soviet anecdotes. And I just want to say thank you so much for my viewers from the other socialist countries. They added a bunch of their own anecdotes. It was uh, from Romania, Czech Republic or Czechoslovakia. I really appreciate it. It's awesome. So if you know a really good anecdote from your country, especially when it relates to Soviet leaders, uh, please add it in comments. We're all going to have a laugh. And as always, don't forget to like the video, share with your friends, share on social media. And if you like this show, you can always support me through patreon.com or just uh, drop a, a dollar, drop a dime on paypal.com. Thank you so much. I hope you had a good laugh and I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.